Hi everybody, welcome back to CSM. I'm Jamie, I'm one of the guitar teachers here, one of three or four I think at this point. I'm here today just to let you know of all the things beyond just your guitar that you're going to need for taking lessons and to learn the guitar effectively. A lot of people go buy a guitar, they sign up for lessons and end it there. Well, there's some very essential equipment that you need at home that's not super expensive um, that you need for your optimal practice and to make the most of playing the instrument. Um, first off, we always suggest here that all of our students begin with a nylon or classical guitar. Of course, sized appropriately. We'll go into that in another video. Um, these guitars are generally, the body size is much smaller, easier to handle, even for adults. Um, the strings are nylon. They're very easy to push down, so they're not very hard on the fingers. Um, the neck is nice and wide, so it's really easy to play chords without hitting too many strings and deadening a lot of notes. Um, and just overall, it's much better to start on a classical guitar. They oftentimes will run a little bit cheaper as well um, than starting with a steel string guitar. Over here, we have a standard steel string guitar. These aren't terrible to learn on, but because of the steel strings, they will tear into your fingers quite a bit more, making it more difficult, especially for young ones, to learn how to play guitar. Um, the body is generally going to be a little bigger, and even for adults, this can be a, a challenge to just hold on to the guitar, and again, just making learning a little bit more difficult. I suggest you, if you're on a budget, you would spend, stay between $100 and $300 on your first guitar. Now, obviously, if you can go a little higher than that, that'd be great, um, but you know, no need to break the bank. Uh, that's one of the benefits of guitar playing, is that it's still a relatively inexpensive way of getting into music. I'm sure if anybody's played piano or trumpet, just starting out is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, you're definitely going to want a case. All right, we suggest a hard shell case of some kind. Um, gig bags are great and very convenient, but they really offer no protection as far as drops, um, severe weather. You know, this instrument's going to be an investment. You want to take care of it. Um, so maybe an extra hundred bucks on a nice case isn't all that bad, especially if you're, I'll tell you some of the horror stories I've heard about gig bags. <laughs> so this, what I have here is my office, and this is what I try and keep it set up as. Um, so when students come in, they're coming into the same situation every time. I'm not going to flip things around. I'm not going to change the lighting in any way. And you should try and replicate this as much as you possibly can at home. On a dedicated practice chair or stool that's a good size for you, obviously with no arms. If you're going to practice in a chair with arms, you're just going to bang into it. You're going to be sitting at the edge of it. It's not going to be very comfortable. Um, next up is a music stand. Music stands, again, are very important and you don't have to spend a lot of money to get one. 15, 20 bucks will get you a nice collapsible music stand. If you have a little bit of extra cash, I suggest you go for a a $30 solid state model which will last you forever as long as you take care of it. Um, I also suggest these because um, you can easily write on your music and make notes or ask questions of your teacher while you're practicing. Um, another great thing to keep on your music stand of course, and I say this a lot, is a pencil. All right? If you're practicing and you don't have one of these handy and you just say oh, I'll write it in later, chances are you're going to forget and you're going to forget the question you wanted to ask your teacher in the lesson. Also, this is great just for making notes for yourself in your music, so you know, oh, this is a trouble spot I'm having trouble with, or I want to make sure I get this note right. Uh, moving on down, we have the all-important footstool. All right, These are mostly associated with classical players, but really they're for any style of guitar where you have to sit down and practice for a while. Um, obviously, we like to have the left leg elevated, so it puts the guitar in a very comfortable playing position. Um, the neck is angled upward, so your left hand is nice and free to get access to the neck. And if you play off the right leg, it really helps bring the guitar up closer to you in a more secure playing position. Um, again, very necessary um, for posture. Uh, if your posture is wrong from the get-go, you're going to have difficulties. And these are things that your teacher can't necessarily see. We don't know that you're sitting on the edge of your bed practicing. Uh, we don't know that you have the music on the floor or on a coffee table practicing. Um, and this can all make it more difficult for, for you to play your music, learn your music, and have a good lesson experience. Also we have all right, our guitar supports. All right, This is a device that you would attach to the bottom of the guitar. 
and this actually props the guitar up for you. Just kind of hang it there for now. These are great, especially if you have back problems or any kind of physical problems um, where it hurts to use a footstool, or if you just don't like using a footstool, that's completely fine. I used one for years, I'm now using a footstool, and I'm also looking into look, using a guitar support again at some point. Um, on that note, make sure if you do have any physical problems, sitting and playing, let your teacher know. Very important. And of course, if you can't tune by ear yet, and chances are you're a beginner and you can't do that quite yet, is a clip-on tuner. All right? These are great, especially if you find yourself having to practice or, or play in a very noisy environment where you can't really hear yourself all that well. They're very, very reactive, meaning the second you play that note, it's going to tell you if you're in tune or not. I use these when I go to play weddings and gigs where it can be really noisy and I can barely hear myself play. Um, this is another type of tuner that uses a microphone. Uh, these are okay, um, but they're about the same price anymore as a clip-on tuner, so you might as well just go with the clip-on tuner, leave it on your guitar, it's always there. Another interesting thing that um, really is very cheap, and but really, really helps in your practicing, is cabinet liner, or I guess you would call this rug runner, anyway, it goes under your rugs um, to keep them from sliding around. Whether you realize it or not, while you're playing the guitar, the guitar is constantly trying to slide. Um, little bits, and especially if you're wearing sweatpants or if you're wearing a suit like I wear a suit and play often, the guitar is just sliding around like crazy. This, if you place it on your lap and then place the guitar on top of it, will keep the guitar even more still. So you can concentrate a lot more on your music and your technique. Next up, I, uh, again, this is one I always I have my pet peeve, are nail clippers, right? Get these, leave them in your guitar case, clip your nails before your guitar lesson. Long nails on your fretting hand get in the way, all right? They make it again. It's a hard instrument, and having long fingernails makes it even more difficult. Uh, moving down the line, extra strings. I've had many students miss a full week of practice because they broke a string. All right. You can go to YouTube to learn how to put one on, or you can take it to a guitar store. And really, it's not that hard to figure out for yourself. And it's a lot better to just try and do it yourself than miss a whole week of practice because you broke a string. Buy three or four packs, you won't regret it. Uh, more on strings, we have a string winder. All right. This device goes onto your tuning key so that you can quickly tighten the string. Otherwise, you're going to be there for a good five minutes just turning that peg. You don't want to waste time doing that. And then, of course, some wire clippers to clip the excess. Really great to have. Over here, this will be su supplied by your teacher depending on what level you're at or what direction you want to go. A method book. All right, We have various method books here at CSM that we use. This is one of them. Read this first, which is a great book. We also ask all of our students to buy a binder, a three ring binder, with notebook paper in it. This is so we have a place for all the other sheets that we plan on giving our students um, that isn't exactly in the book. Also with notebook paper we have a space to write out exercises and keep track of the assignments that we give all of our students. Try to find a quiet area away from everyone in your house, all right? Um, you want to have a spot where you can dedicate to music, a spot where you can have full concentration for about a half hour, hour, however much time that you practice. Um, the last thing that you need, and we always say this, is practice, all right? No matter how good your teacher is, it means nothing unless you're going to sit at home and put the work in.